morning everyone welcome back to the channel i'm back here at infinity of flemington to take a look at a brand new 2022 infinity q60 sport coupe this q60 has been discontinued for the 2023 model year by infinity due to lack of sales and after only five model years it's gone so with this review we're going to take one last look at Infinity Sports Coupe, the 2022 Infinity Q60. This is the Lux all-wheel drive trim. So let's dig in. All right, here we are looking at the front end of this Graphite Shadow Q60 LED headlights, LED daytime running lamps, LED turn signals, LED fog lamps, that large Infinity badge in the middle, we have the silver trim around the grill, which looks nice. Functionality on the grill, top and bottom. An aggressive looking front end, and I think a real good looking one. All right, wheel and tire package on this Infinity. We have a 19 inch silver wheel with some black accents or gunmetal gray accents, which looks good. Ventilated rotors, standard brake calipers. We have all season tires on this Q60 Lux all wheel drive. 255 on the width, a 40 series side wall, 19s, all four corners, all wheel drive. All right, full side profile on this Q60. It is a nice proportional looking car. I like the, that hard body line that goes across the top of the door, through the door handle and into those rear haunches. Really gives it some sense of presence on the road. I think it's a good looking car that you have that chrome vent on the front fender, which is looking pretty good. So overall, I think it's a handsome looking car. And I think this graphite shadow paint is a nice color on here, especially with the silver wheels. Well done. As we move in closer, here is this silver vent i'm talking about right here and it is functional on the front fender we are color matched in the side view mirror and please excuse all the ice but it is a frosty morning out here and this car was sitting for a while we have led turn signals right here we are color matched on the door handle with some uh, chrome trim which is nice up top we have a color match with the shark fin antenna and a sunroof with a lot of frost on it. <laughs> All right, in the rear end of this Q60 Lux, and I think this is the best part of the car. I love the way that deck lid kicks up with that little bit of a spoiler. You got the infinity badge in the middle, all wheel drive on the left, Q60 on the right, LED taillights, LED turn signals, functional dual exhaust with that nice round chrome opening slash cut, gloss black down below, functional vents underneath those uh, uh, reflectors down below on the bumper so really nice look and now let's take a listen to see how she sounds We are under the hood of this 2023 Q60 Sports Coupe and we got a twin turbo V6. 300 horsepower, 295 pound-feet of torque, mated to a seven-speed automatic transmission. MPGs, 19 in the city, 27 on the highway, 22 combined. The engine's octane rating for optimal performance is 91, so you will need to spend your money on some premium unleaded fuel. All right, so before we jump on the inside of this Infiniti Q60 Sports Coupe, you're going to want to know, Mike, how much does this vehicle cost? Well, MSRP, the way this one is optioned, and this car has just about $4,500 in options, you're looking at an MSRP of $57,525. So let's get on with it and check out the interior. All right, starting with the foot box, we have a dead pedal brake and accelerator with all Rubber finish, I like to see this in aluminum given that this is a sports coupe and this price point. We have an illuminated door sill plate that says Infinity to welcome you to the car, which is a nice touch. Power seats for the driver and passenger with lumbar. And this button over here adjusts the side bolstering to make it firmer or more comfortable depending on how you want it set. So that's a nice little touch. As we move into the seats, nice black leather, white cross stitch, nice headrests, Feels good, 
the side bolsters feel good. So it's a nice, real nice, plain black, but a nice sporty look on the inside of this Q60. Door panel action, nice looking door panel. We have the leather up top with cross stitch looking good. We got silver brushed aluminum trim around the chrome door handles, which looks really nice. Flat black on the switch gear, nice grab handles and a nice soft armrest. We also have that Bose, optional Bose performance sound system. Looking good on the door panel. I like the way this dash looks. It really gives it a sense of motion curving around and then going into the door panel. So I like that design. I think it looks nice. We'd have the soft touch up top with the cross stitch and we have a nice large glove box. All right, infotainment system time. We have that dual panel action from Infinity. where up top, you're gonna see the maps and drive modes and your backup camera. And down below are all your other climate controls, your menu, your audio controls, and all that other good stuff. We have wireless Apple CarPlay, but wired Android Auto, but it does come with both. You have your climate settings where you can get your, your heated seats for both the driver and front passenger, and your heated steering wheel, which is a nice touch. You can adjust your climate control down here, dual climate control on either side with your rear and front defrost action. So plenty of regular switches to get things done. You can also access your heated seats from a button down below of the infotainment system, which is nice. If we put this into reverse, the backup camera comes on with your 360 action. We have nice trajectory and nice 360 view, but the view is a bit grainy. So they, I think in Infinity needs to upgrade their rear view cameras, but you do have the 360 view, which is nice. And then you can bebop back to home and see all the rest of your apps that you have in here that you can deal with. So it's a very, very nice, simple to use dual screen infotainment system. And then if we hit our drive modes, they actually show up up here in, on an overlay over the top of the map. So you have personal, sport, standard, eco, and snow mode in this all-wheel drive Q60. We're gonna leave it in sport for the drive today, but that's how those would look as well. As we move on down, we have a 12 volt right there. Here is the gear shift to go through the seven speed automatic transmission. We have our dials for our uh, infotainment system if you don't want to use the touch screen. Two cup holders, and we have our Infinity, ancient Infinity key fob, where you have your remote start, lock, unlock, pop the trunk, panic button, and there's the back. Very light, very nice. As we come on, we have a nice soft center armrest, leather with the white cross stitch. And then in there, you have a 12 volt, an aux jack, USB-C, USB-A. So they got you covered for connectivity, looking good. All right, Infinity steering wheel, nice leather wrapped steering wheel, nice 10 and two notches. We got some chrome trim around the horn button with the Infinity badge in the middle, the chrome trim extending down below. I would have liked to have seen this as a flat bottom wheel because this is a tight car to get in and out of and a flat bottom would make it easier for your legs to get out of the car when you're when you're leaving so i wish this was flat bottom but since they're discontinuing it it is what it is flat black on the switch gear telephone and voice commands on the left your cruise control and safety suite controls on the right we don't have paddles in this car a sports coupe without paddles that's an interesting choice on the left, you have your controls for your headlights and fog lamps. On the right, controls for your windshield wiper. Down below, we have traction control off and pop the trunk. And up here, we can brighten and dim the dash, trip reset, and this button right here is for the electric uh, tilting and telescoping steering wheel. As we move in closer to the dash, We have a digital analog combo. So we have analog gauges for a speedometer, tachometer, fuel level, and coolant temperature with a small four inch display in the middle. That's gonna give you other information. Uh, you got a compass, you have your radio controls, your driving aids on, off, engine oil, when your next service is due. 
all that other good stuff, your range to tank, average miles per gallon and that sort of thing. We're gonna leave this on the MPG. I don't know why we're driving it in sport, but we'll see what we get. Why the heck not? But at the Lux trim, which is the middle of the road trim for the Q60, uh, you know, this dash is looking pretty good and it's simple and it's easy to figure out. Overhead console time. We have LED lighting on the interior of the car, which is nice. And if you want the lights to come on and off when you open and close the door, this button needs to remain in the off position, which is where it is now. And then when you open the door, your LED lights will come on. When you close the door, they will go off after a few seconds, just like that, and we're good to go. Here's your SOS button, and here is the control for your sunroof. So if we hit that, Oh, up it goes and it opens all the way. Standard sunroof, not bad. And then you close it up and the roof will come closed. And then you can just pull that shade closed. That's not automatic. We get to the sunshade with vanity. Is it a slider? Yes, it is to block out that side sun. Very nice. Nicely done. Standard rear view mirror, no digital rear view mirror for the Q60 in this Lux all wheel drive trim. All right, on the driver's side, <clears throat> we have two memory seat settings right here for the driver, which is nice. And then we also have the power fold mirrors. So when you have this set, when you lock the car, the mirrors will fold in, which is a nice touch. All right, this car is a two plus two. It does have rear seats, but you can forget about getting into the back if you have any size at all to you. If you do want to get into the back seat, here's the thing. We can open that up. This has to wrap around here so you can get in. But as you can see, these back seats, I got my camera gear back here. These back seats are very, very small. They do have nice leather with the cross stitch. So Infinity didn't cheap out on the back, but you can fit in, fit in here. These are essentially uh, extra storage areas, no doubt about it. And you do have two cup holders there in the center. All right, we are at the back of the car for some trunk action. You can pop the trunk using the key fob or on the dashboard. And once you pop it, you just come to the back, you lift it on up, it's nice and light. We do have an optional cargo net here in this one. And then we have some extra goodies that Infinity gives you, plus the owner's manual and your carpeted floor mats right here. This has the all season infinity mat under cargo mat underneath. You open this up and you have more cargo, uh, more sp space here for tools and whatnot. And I'm gonna try to get this other area to see if I can get it open. So bear with me. Now, can't get it. So I'm not sure if there's a spare in here or not, but the trunk is really small. As you can see, there is not a lot of room, maybe a couple of overnight bags, maybe one suitcase, one and a half suitcases. It's really quite small and it's tight. So certainly this coupe does not have the flexibility that the, um, the uh, Q50 sedan has as far as storage space. And you can use this lever to pull to pull and drop the rear seats down to give you some extra room, but it's gonna be tight no matter what. All right, here is the window sticker for this 2022 Infiniti Q60 Lux all wheel drive. So feel free to pause the video, zoom in, see everything that's optioned into this vehicle. And now let's go drive. All right, we are out on the roads on the back roads here in this Q60. Let's see what we can do here on some twisty roads, if we can find some decent ones. Nice hold to the ear, look at that, to the right, back to the left, nicely planted. A little roll on the body, but nicely planted. Now we're gonna to come to a nice stop. Very well done. Things are rattling around in here. Now we're back on the gas, looking good. Back 
back to the left. Nice big sweeper holding the gear really well. Back to the right. Holding that gear really well. Nicely done. Back on the gas. Coming down the hill. Really direct steering. Get some nice feedback coming through the steering wheel. Got some deer out here. And we're through. Nice. Stepping on the brakes hard. Wheel does not move around. All right, so thoughts on the Q60. Handles well. I mean, it handles really well. I can feel what the road's doing through the steering wheel, which is always a plus. How's this turning ratio look here? Nice. And around we go and back off. Very nice. Nicely done. So, visibility is good. For a coupe, it is good. Tight to get into the seat. If you're, uh, I'm 5'11", it's kind of tight to get into the seat. Uh, Got to watch your head. So I have the seat set a little lower than I normally would. It's set into the chassis a bit more. Gives me a better feel, I think, for where the car is going and where it is. But the visibility is good. The ride is good. The ride is solid. Performance of the engine, solid. Performance of the transmission, solid. Now, you can get this in Red Sport trim, top trim, 400 horsepower instead of the 300 that's in this one. So if you really want to ramp it up, you can do it. But this is a nice compromise. The thing that I'm going to zap this car for is, one, no paddles on a sports coupe. Really? Mid middle of the road trim, but come on, you got to give me paddles. This is a sports coupe. I can manually shift using the gear shift. If I move it over to the left, then I can go up and down the gears manually by pushing the gear shift up or pulling it back down. So that's a possible, but it's not as fun as the paddles. Come on. Now, 57,500, I don't have a wireless charging pad in here. That's a problem too. You need to have a wireless charging pad for your phone. Plus, there's no place to put my phone in here. All the little cubbies are too small. The cup holders, it rattles around in. And, well, if I have it in the armrest, how can I get to it if I need it? So, uh, it needs a spot for a wireless charging pad. Now, this model is being discontinued, so that ain't never going to happen. But, I just figured I'd point that out to anybody who's going to be watching this video. Nice. Watching this video. Uh, because it is, it is important. I like the sunroof. I like the nice size side view mirrors. They're nice and big. So I really, really like that. Uh, so overall, it is a fun, fun car to drive. And I wanted to find a place where I could give it a little bit of a zoom so I could show you how this thing handles. Now we're back on Route 12, heading back down towards the dealership. Nice shifts, kicks off real nice, gets the car up to speed, no problem with this 300 horsepower. I'd love to see what a 400 horsepower one would be like. Don't know, because with the discontinuation, I didn't think Infinity of Flemington would get another Q60 because we're at the end of the line. It's all over. So if you want a Q60 sports coupe, you better find one at an Infiniti dealer and go buy it. Because they are gonzo and they're not coming back. Not the way the industry is headed. This is going to leave Infiniti with one car, the Q50 for 2023, and four SUVs. 
the QX50, the QX55, the QX60, and the QX80. And that's going to be it. Should Infinity have more than one car? Let me know what you think in the comments. Obviously, the Japanese competition does. Lexus has more than one car on the lineup. Toy, uh, uh, Acura uh, has more than one car on the lineup. So let me know what you think about Infinity going down to one car for 2023. I know this wasn't selling, uh, so the decision is put a lot of money into a redesign since we really haven't had a redesign on this car. Um, or... Uh, do we just kill it off? And Infinity made the economical decision to kill it off. I think it's a fun little, it's a fun car. No, no real room for people in the back though. So if you're going out in this, you're going to have two people in here comfortably with your some gear in the trunk and some gear in these back seats if you want to go away for the weekend or whatnot. But it's a fun car to drive. It handles well. It's well damped. You have the safety technology in here with your blind spot monitoring, cross traffic alert, traffic line recognition and all that other good stuff. So they have all that stuff in here. The engine is a really good engine. You can really feel that twin turbo and that torque throw you in the back of the seat when you step on it. So I, the car is a nice package. It all depends on is it a package for you because if you need more room, you're not gonna buy this car. But it is what it is. This is the end of the road. I wanted to get into one before they were all gone. Because I've never been in a Q60 before. So I wanted to get in here and see what it was all about. I And I really enjoyed myself on this drive this morning. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd like to thank Steve and Rob and everybody at Infinity of Flemington for allowing the channel access to this Infinity Q60 for review today. I'd also like to thank all of you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. Please also consider subscribing and turning on that notification bell so you'll never miss another Shabby's Rides video. And I'll see all of you on the rebound. Take care, everyone.